You can also use this, which is a sax. <laughs> so good day, everyone, and welcome back. I am your teacher here, Mom Kate, and welcome to lesson four. Our lesson for today is data presentation, still under chapter one, exploring data. Our objectives are the following. Identify the appropriate graphical method to use in presenting information. Appreciate the importance of presenting data and using the appropriate method to present data effectively. So before we start, on your modules, we have here a word search. So why don't you try it on your modules first before starting in our lesson for today? Recalling, our statistical processes consist of four methods, collecting, processing, summarizing, and analyzing data. Last lesson, we discussed collecting and processing data. For now, we are now going to discuss under summarizing data and a bit of analyzing as well. For summarizing, there are three types to summarize data. You have textual or narrative, you have tabular, and then you have graphical. When we say textual or narrative, it's describing data using text or narratives. When using tabular data, we summarize the data into tables. And while using graphical data, we are going to present data using graphs. In textual or narrative method, one describes the data by using text or highlighting some of the important parts of the data, like giving the highest or lowest average values. For example, you have this text here. In our example, there are less than 10 observations. The data could be enumerated if there is a need to do as such. The second method of data presentation is tabular method. The tabular method of presentation is applicable for large data sets, for example, more than 10 observations. Trends could be easily seen in this kind of presentation. For example, we have this table. This table is the regional estimates of poverty increase. Now, you can notice that we have there four labeled parts. You have the row header, column header, body, and table title. Be very careful in using tabular data because there can be a loss of information when handling such kind of presentation. Okay, so let's move on to these four table parts. We have the table title, column header, row header, and body. In the table title, you can see the number and a short description of what is found inside the table. Column header, it provides the label of what is being presented in a column. Body, in the body, the information in the cell intersecting the row and column. So in general, a table should have at least three rows and or three columns. This example was taken from 2015 Philippine Statistics in Brief, a regular publication to the PSA, which is also basis for the example of the textual presentation given above. You have the last one, which is the graphical. The graphical method is a visual representation of the data. Now, you are familiar with some of these graphs. You have their pie graph, you have bar graph, line graph. There are several forms of graphs to use, like this. Which form to use depends on what information to be related. For example, trends across time are easily seen using a line graph. However, values of variables in nominal or ordinal levels of measurement should not be presented using a line graph. Rather, a bar graph is more appropriate. So diving deep into this, you have the first one, which is the bar graph. This is an example of a vertical bar graph. This is also an example of a bar graph. However, it is presented in a vertical way and with clustered bar graphs for each. This is what we call a clustered bar graph. Next, you have the line graph. You can have more than one or two lines here in a line graph, but a rule of thumb is a maximum of five lines to be able to see the trends. You can also have a line graph having no labels for the scores or a line graph having labels for the scores. Next, you have the pie graph, a circle divided into separate parts. You can also present this by using the percentage of each pie or uh, writing the number for each pie. You can also use this, which is a scatter plot diagram, where each data or where each point is represented as one point in the diagram. Now, this is a bad example of a scatter plot diagram where you are going to label each point for their x and y axis. And also, you're going to notice that there is no title for the graph. In analysis, 
We determine the most appropriate graph to use by looking at the variable's level of measurement. So, in summary, we have there the form of graphs, the level of measurements, the special conditions, and what it is generally used for. So for the form of graph, you have the bar graph is the best to use in nominal level of measurement. For special conditions, your data should be divided into categories. For the histogram or Pareto chart, your level of measurement should be ordinal interval or ratio. Your special conditions, there should be class boundaries. And then it's used for frequency of the data. Next, you have the form of graph, which is the pie chart. The level of measurement is used is for all levels of measurements, which are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Your special condition should be, yes, more than one variable. You cannot have a pie chart with just one variable. And it's used for percentage or for showing proportion or for parts. Next, you have the line chart or frequency polygon. Your level of measurement should be interval and ratio. There is actually no special conditions in these. And it's used for to show trends or patterns, which easily be seen in the data. Next, you have scatter plot diagram and pictograph. They are for any level of measurement. And then your special conditions, there is none. And it's for scatter plot diagram, it's used for clusters. While for pictograph, it's used for visualization. So based on the characteristics of the common forms of graphs, the following table shows what form of graphs is appropriate to use given the variable's level of measurement its special conditions, and what the graph is generally used for. So going back, our statistical process, we have discussed collecting and processing and also summarizing. A bit of analyzing was done as well, but we're going to tackle this more on our next lesson. So that's it for our lesson four. Who knew that there was more than one method in presenting data, right? Thank you and come back again. <laughs>